stuff, huh? Hey, let me see. Wow. This is special. This is very, very unusual. What? What is it? It's a dingle hopper. Dinner time! Let's just say, it took a while for the fork to catch on. Forks had first been in use in ancient Egypt, Greece, and Rome. Though, rather than being used for eating, these lengthy, two-tined forks were used for carving and lifting meats from a fire. In other words, most diners ate with their fingers. Near 1004, Maria Agiropoulos, Greek niece of the Byzantine Emperor, arrived to Venice with a gift of golden forks. Maria used these utensils at her wedding feast. Her guests saw her act of eating with a fork as a sin since God had provided us with natural forks, our fingers. Maria later died from the plague, many claiming it was God's way of punishing her. Similarly, in the 1400s, Catherine de' Medici had arrived from Italy with the gift of silver forks in hand for Henry II. Having no harm on Catherine, forks were now looked at with a bit more positivity, but still not enough to make a place for the fork on a dining room table. After observing their use in Italy around 1608, an English explorer, Thomas Croyate, brought England their first forks. The response to his findings? Extremely negative. Fursifer is what they called him. Translated, it means a man doomed to hang. The tool finally gained respect in 1633 when Charles I of England declared it is decent to use a fork. By the 18th century, curved forks were being used for foods like peas. Surprisingly, forks were not brought into the U.S. until the 19th century. We all know that the massive explosion known as the Big Bang started the universe. In this large universe, stars light up the sky. Within these stars, the perfect Goldilocks conditions of very high temperatures is used to advantage, allowing more protons and neutrons to be fused together. When this occurs, new elements are made. This cycle repeats. As it does this, new and larger elements up to iron are created. Similarly, an extremely large star known as a supernova has the ability to create elements even larger than iron when going through the same cycle. Amazingly, these stars are what form the element we know as silver, allowing this material to be used in the production of the forks. Nowadays though, stainless steel is used because it has many more positive attributes. Our ancestors developed stone tool making as far back as 2.6 million years ago. Once becoming more intelligent, sharpened stones and sticks were used to break down and consume their newly hot meals. Also, shells and hollowed animal horns were also used, leading to the early development of the spoon. This shows that the silverware we have now is based off of what our ancestors had formulated hundreds of years ago. Though the new shape and material of the fork was much more efficient, it has been found that the very method of using a fork has changed the shape of our face. Dentist professionals have found that forks are what have caused humans to have overbites. Due to this, our jaw shape has changed from what our ancestors had had. Imagine if forks had never been accepted into society and we still ate with our fingers at restaurants, dining room tables, or at school for our lunch. Forks went through multiple stages of changes in which not only transformed our face, but also the way we eat. This change allowed for production to become more efficient, creating new ways to use a fork, such as artistic pieces. Though it is now a must-have when setting the table for dinner, it is evident that it took a while for forks to become accepted into use all over the world. So next time you're using a fork, don't take it for granted. It had to go through a lot to get on that table.